God bless you all. You are highly blessed and favored in Jesus' name. How are you doing? How has it been with your life? Those of us that are just waking, I hope you slept well. It is well. It is by His mercy and by His divine favor that you are waking up strong, healthy, and alive. May his name be praised forevermore, in Jesus' name. Amen. He's a pillar that holds our life. He's a pillar that holds our life. Mighty Jesus is the pillar of. He's the pillar of. Is the pillar that holds our life. Master Jesus is the pillar. Oh, oh, oh is the pillar. Oh, oh, oh. Is the pillar that holds our life. Master Jesus is the pillar. Hey, oh, he is a pillar. Oh. You are the pillar that holds my life. Preacher Jesus, you are the pillar. Oh, you are the pillar. Oh. You are the pillar that holds my life. Master Jesus, you are the pillar, pillar, oh, you are the pillar, oh, you are the pillar that holds my life. Precious Redeemer, you are the pillar, oh, oh, you are the pillar, oh, you are the pillar that holds my life. Precious Emmanuel, you are the pillar, pillar, you are the pillar, oh, you are the pillar that holds my love. Eshada, you are the pillar, oh, oh, you are the pillar, oh, you are the pillar that holds my love. Precious Redeemer, you are the pillar. You are the pillar. You are the pillar that holds my life. He is the pillar that holds your life. He is the pillar. Any other place you trust in, any other person you hook on, any other place you pitch on, Sorry, on pinch, come out from there. They will not help you. You have only one pillar, and that is Rock of Ages. You have only one God, the Savior of the whole universe. You have only one King, who is the pillar, and the mighty pillar, the great pillar of your life. Mm. He is the pillar of pillars. He is the rock. And only him alone has done it before. Him alone can do it. And he is the only one that is doing it now. He is the pillar that holds your life. God bless you. You're welcome to this morning program from Nigeria. Olimo State, Nigeria. You're welcome. God bless you. Whatever part you are listening from North America, God bless you from South America, you're blessed. From Europe, you're welcome. From Asian country, you're favored. From Australia country, you are lifted. From every African country, oh, you are honored of the Lord. God bless you. Hallelujah. God is our Father. He is our Lord and the Savior of the whole universe. There are a lot of shakings. There are a lot of quakes. But we have a Father who is full of love, care, and understanding. May his name alone be praised forever. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. You are highly welcome. Shall we pray? Father of our Lord Jesus, ancient of the days, the Holy One of Israel, the gracious Father of our Prince of Peace, King of King, God of God, unto you alone be our glory. You are highly lifted up. You are highly glorified. You are highly magnified. Hmm. Let thy glory be above all the earth, Lord. This is an hour. Time for you to speak. That the minister your word to us. That the minister word of power, minister word of life. That they let the word of grace come in. Let the word of honor, reality and dignity come in. And let thy name alone be glorified. In the name of Jesus Christ, speak your word to us, O Lord, that at the end Christ alone be glorified. Blessed be your name for being the mighty man of honor. We worship and honor you. Heal us, serve us, deliver us, comfort us, encourage us, renew us. Revive us and let that divine peace rule over our lives forever. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. You're welcome. We're still in that series. That said, Jesus, our burden bearer. Jesus, our burden bearer. Today we're going to see and discuss and see him as a man of sorrow. We're talking about sorrows. Sorrow of Jesus, of Nazareth. He is a man of sorrow. We're going to talk about the sorrows. Why is Jesus our burden bearer? Why is he our burden bearer? Why is it that only him can bear your burden? Why him alone and him alone can bear your burden? Why is he sufficient for all your burdens, all your pains, all your cares, all your tears, all your secret uh, agony? All those things that happen to you that you know you cannot share with anybody. You end up in tears, rolling down tears. There are a lot that could not be uttered. Except when it is too burdensome, so troubling you, you utter it out, you speak it out. That is a God who is worthy. That is a God who is great. There is a God who is excellent. There is a God who oversees everything. Who knows that what you are passing through is only a process to greatness. <laughs> Somebody was asking God, I want to be great, I want to be great. I was laughing at the person because so many people pray this prayer without knowing what they request or what they ask for. So many of us say, oh God, I want to be a great man. Make me, as a, make me as a great woman. Break me. I want to be mightily used. I want to be highly used. I want people to know that God lives in me, use me mightily. And when they finish making this statement, I end up laughing at them. Do they know what they're asking? They're asking God to break them. Eh? They're asking God to make them nobody. So that Christ will fill them up. But when we're still having our names to protect do you know you stand my name? Whenever I see children of God who are still talking, you, you gossip with my name, you damage my name. Do you know the damage you brought to my name? I will laugh because they are still now. They are not broken yet. Whenever you are broken, you forget about your name. You defend only one name, the name of Jesus. That's the name you can fight for. That's the name you can stand and be radical for. But when they're talking about your name, tell them, forget about it. But Damien is not a name to fight for. The only name is Jesus. Damien is not the name that has saved any man before. It's the name of Jesus. So when people are gossiping you, say a manner of evil against you, talk this and this and that and that. I was also one evangelist, a powerful woman of God. Assuming they spoke against you and gossip with your name, and then you see it widely publicized that you are living in adultery. Uh, there's adultery, sexual sin. What will you do to that person? She said, hmm, hmm, daddy. I, I, what I will do to that person has not really come to my mind, but eh, I will so handle him or her. I laughed. I laughed. Are you ready for the blessings of the Lord? When you are blessed, ready for the blessings. The blessings is not from up. It's from down here. Are you getting me? 
let me differentiate. Let, let me say what I mean. It is what you have done here on earth that will bring down the blessing from above. Blessing from above cannot just be poured on you. It is what you have passed through here. The level of breakage, the level of everything you have allowed yourself to pass through here on earth. There must be pain, there must be sorrow, there must be crying, there must be tears, there must be burdens, there must be a lot of things that must have to happen. If they don't happen, you will not be promoted. When they are happen and you have a when they happen, you'll be blessed, you'll be favored, and you'll be lifted. My prayers is that the mighty hand of Christ will lift you up this morning. As you hear this word of life, the Bible, we're talking about the sorrows of Jesus of Nazareth. That is why he has passed through sorrow, he is able to bear your sorrows. Let's see Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3 again. Isaiah chapter 53, just verse 3. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3. Have you seen sorrow in your life? What is the level of sorrows you have seen? Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3. The Bible says, He is despised and rejected of men. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows, and acquainted with grief. And we had as it to wear our faces from him. He was despised and was esteemed, and we esteem him not. Let me read it again. He is despised and rejected of men. Isaiah chapter 53, verse 3. Thank you, Maureen. God bless you. God bless you for you. Just written it down. God bless you. He is despised and rejected of men. He is despised and rejected of men. A man of sorrows and acquainted with griefs. And we heard as if we our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. That's a man of sorrow. What is the word sorrow? Like we'll talk about sorrow, we'll talk about sorrow. You see, a, 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 a woman that lost the husband will sorrow almost all the years of her life. Especially when that man is so good. Even if she remarries, she keeps saying, my late husband, my late husband, my late husband, more than five, six, seven times. Hallelujah. Don't worry. Don't mind us. We changed the network. The, the network we're using was so poor. So we switched over to another network. So don't mind. God bless you. We are on. We're on. We're together. Eh? Let's go ahead. So if she, you stay with her for one hour, you will hear my little one, my little one for more than three, four, five, six, seven times or more. What is sorrow? The word sorrow means a feeling of deep distress. No peace. No joy, no comfort. A feeling of deep distress caused by loss. A feeling of deep distress. That is sorrow. A feeling of deep distress caused by sorrow. Uh, or disappointment. Or other misfortunes. So far by self or others. That is the word sorrow. A deep distress caused by loss. A deep distress caused by loss. Mm. Disappointment or other misfortunes. That is so. Yesterday, in the internet, a man brought out his house that was burned down by yet to be identified group of people. And his elder brother was equally killed. They came, raised down the house with fire. And the elder brother killed. It is so sorrowful. It is so sorrowful. And the man had been in sorrow. Jesus was a man of sorrow. How do you handle disappointments? Misfortunes. Unexpected things. Loss. People that lost their job, sorrows. But let me tell you, a child of God, before anything could happen to you, before anything could happen to you, the most holy God is there. 
before anything could happen to you, God knows about it. It does doesn't happen. For you not to live in sorrow and die in sorrow, you must know that somebody has planned your life. You are only acting the stage. Are you hearing me? You're only an actor on the stage. Somebody has written the script about your life. This is what you should do. This is where you will go. This is where you cannot go. Somebody has written it down. It has been written down. A man of sorrow acquainted with griefs. We're talking about his sorrows today. Why is Jesus our burden bearer? The Lord Jesus has been our burden bearer from the time immemorial. Okay? So we're going to discuss why he say about them bearer. There are many sorrows he has beard. What are the sorrows of Jesus of Nazareth? We're going to see the sorrows. He has passed through these sorrows. And I told myself, if Jesus has passed through these sorrows, I will not pass through them again. He died for me on the cross of Calvary. He has taken my griefs. He has carried my burdens. My sicknesses. Anything. There are people who are very fine and kind and love of sicknesses are so disfigured them. They are in sorrows of sicknesses. Passing through one pain or the other. One insult or the other. A lot of people have been sick. They would have recovered. But the maltreatment they receive in the hospital. I don't know how to, what to, we used to qualify some nurses. There are some nurses that are God sent. Very lovely. But there are some. Hey! You regret of meeting them in life. Maybe they have transferred aggression and they transfer it to the patients. Please, if you are a nurse, don't transfer your aggression to patients. Bury your hatches. Put on a smile on that sick man, on that sick woman. Just a smile you put on, even if it doesn't come from your heart, will go a long way to relieve that sick man, to relieve that sick woman. I plead with you. It's a high time we rise to do good. And the name of Christ be glorified and praised in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay? What are the sorrows of Jesus? Number one, his disciples forsook him. His disciples forsook him. That's number one sorrow. Have you been forsaken before? By beloved one. By caring one, by loving ones. And in time of need and pain, you call them, they say, I don't know you. Ah, don't disturb me. Oh. Ah, don't disturb me. He said, ah, what are you saying? He said, I said, don't disturb my life, please. Ah, ah. But you said you would do this, you would do that. You know, God passed us through a lot. When I was about to get married, my life, one bishop, promised me as a man of God. You've been laboring for God. As an evangelist you are. Say so thank you for joining the ministry. We are going to take care of everything about your marriage. I said, hey, thank you, Jesus. So go and fix time with your in-laws. I went and fixed time with them and date. I went for him. I didn't see him. I went back again to tell him I fixed date, sir. Unfortunately, I met him. Child. That was a great day of sorrow in my life. When I met him, he sat me down and started explaining. He never explained like this in the beginning. He told me and said, oh, Man of God, you know it's not good to marry for a man. Let him pay the bride price. Let him do this and do that so that he will value the wife. I said, Child. That was at the 11th hour. When everything when everything must have been said. Hey! I didn't know what to do. I was just like, mm. but thank God. I never knew that God had made another provision. Time of sorrow. Don't sorrow forever. There may be something that has happened in your life a year ago, six months ago, three months ago, four months ago, five months ago, two, three, four years. You are still sorry. Stop sorrowing. 
problems arise to be solved. For a problem to rise, it just to let you know that there's a solution somewhere. Are you hearing me? There is a God who is up to something. There's a God who is worthy. Disciples forsook him. And they left him. And they went their ways. Child. Have you been forsaken? Have somebody you love so much, you care for, denied you or spoke evil? In the book of Matthew chapter 26, verse 56. Mm. Matthew chapter 26, verse 56. Matthew chapter 26, verse 56. Matthew chapter 26, verse 56, the Bible said, But all this was done, that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Mm. Let, 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 for you to get the story, let's read from 55. For you to get the story, let's read from 55. In that same hour, Matthew chapter 26, let's read from 55. In that same hour, said Jesus unto the multitude, Are you come out as a thief with sword and staff? For to take me, I sat daily with you, teaching in the temple, and you laid no hold on me. But all this was done, that the scripture, the scriptures of the prophet might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. They forsook him and they fled. Have you been forsaken before? By your wife? By your husband? By your children? By your mother? By your father? By your brothers? Have you been forsaken? Are you still sorrowing about it? When I was about to go to Bible college, like I told you, the law was a whole my aspiration of my life. I wanted to be a lawyer. <laughs> that was my desire then. But because I told you, you're only acting on a script that I've been written, a script that I've been written. God has written the script of my life. What is the will of God? Will of God is when you play the script God wrote about you, that is you are the will of God. May we not disappoint God. We have great zeal at the beginning, but let our zeal go down and God will be looking at us and say, look at humanity. You are the one who will be asking God, bless me. I will bless people. Help me. I will help people. This and that. What is, are you helping anyone today? Are you not counting grudges? Are you not counting evil they have done? Are you not the one giving reason why you should not help anybody? <laughs> God is keeping the record of how you started with him. Oh, a man of grief. Acquainted with soul. Okay? The Bible said they were there that night. He was telling them, Ah, I will die, yo. I'll be arrested, yo. I'll be molested, yo. I'll be spoken of. They say, Hey, Peter even spoke out. Others may say in their heart, You dying, I will die with you. Do you know who you are? A miracle worker. But they even doubted it and said, mm -mm, He will not. Hey, how can that be? No, nah. How can he die? This powerful man who is a miracle worker. I know Judas played that gamble. Let me sell him. So that by the time they came to arrest him, he would disappear as he used to do. And for the fact that I have, I have directed them to him, I have sold him already, they cannot ask me back for the money. One of them that be hearing the gospel, something entered him. May something not enter you to betray your master. May something enter, not enter you to betray the gospel we preach. If he's somebody that had the word of God from Jesus himself, could go out and do undo. Yeah, how much more? That your member, man of God, that your member, the devil have so used against you. Why not forgive him and go afford your head with life? All these things were done that the professor might be. The Bible said, when they came and got him arrested, Peter started with a knife, fear, cut off somebody's ear. He said, keep back, keep it back. Ah. Does he want us to fight with Behan? Well, he wants us to also be arrested and taken that the Bible says they forsook him. Look at what the Bible said. And fled. Matthew chapter 26 from 56. But all of verse 56 says, 26, 56. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophet might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. 
They forsook him and fled. They forsook him and fled. They forsook him and fled. They forsook him and fled. Some people that forsake you are still around you, still hearing your voice, still talking to you. Okay, I'm sorry. I disappointed you. I'm doing that. But that of Jesus, they fled. They ran away. The master was arrested. The master was captured. That was the sorrow. Have you been disappointed? Have people you trusted disappointed you? Have somebody promised you finances? I said, that's what I'm going to. Bring so 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 man, I'm going to be a help to you. I'm going to give you finances. I'll give you aid. I'll help you. And at the end of the day, you become disappointed. Don't worry. Take it easy. That's not the end of life. Are you hearing me? Insult from different angles. It looks as if the problems are insurmountable. Relax. 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 There is a God who is worthy. There is a God who is real and great. There is a Father of our Lord Jesus that has been so gracious, that has been so mighty, that is so wonderful. Unto him alone be all that glory forever in Jesus' name. Amen. He was a man of soul. His disciples, that's why. He has seen what it means to be forsaken. The people you helped, the people you are with, the people you told to pray together with you, your close prayer partners. And things become so hard and difficult, they fled. They ran away. Mm. Great is the faithfulness of our God. And number two, Peter denied him. <laughs> eh, the same man who have you been denied? Peter denied him. Let's still see the same chapter 26, from 69 to 55, to, 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 from 69 to 74. Matthew chapter 26, from 69 to 75. 69 to 75. Well, we are reading already Matthew chapter 16, uh, chapter 26, verse 69 to 75. Matthew chapter 26 from verse 69 to 75. Mm. Ah, oh my God. From verse 69 to 75. We have a true God. Look at what the Bible says. Have you been denied before? Peter denied him. Thank you so much, precious daughter of Zion, for writing this for me. Oh, I'm grateful. Hmm. Now, Peter, verse 69, Matthew chapter 26 from 69. Now, Peter sat without in the palace. And the damsel came unto him, saying, Thou also was with Jesus of Nazareth. But he denied before them all, saying, I know not what thou sayest, child. He has denied. That's the first denial. He denied Jesus. Who have denied you? Can you forgive the people that denied you? And when he was gone out into the porch, another maid saw him and said unto them that we are there. This fellow was also with Jesus of Nazareth. Verse 72. Again he denied with an oath. I do not know him. He sweared with an oath. I never know him. With emphasis. And after a while came unto him, they that stood by, and said to Peter, Surely thou also art one of them, for thy speech betrayed you. He spoke like a Galilean. Then began he to curse. He now, the first one was swearing. He began to swear, take oath. This one now is cursed. He began to curse. And to answer, saying, I know not the man. And immediately the cock crew. Child. Denial. Have you been denied? A lot of children have been denied by their parents. I am not the owner of these children. Let me tell you. Father, mother, especially it is the women that are victims. I was talking with one young lady. I said, I mean, she was telling me there are about four of them in the house. 
This and that she was talking and talking. I said, wow. She said, their father denied them, saying he's not their father. Hey! Why not handle them as human beings? Why treat them, them, them like animals? Even if you are not the direct biological father. Why not have everything? Why not have everything? Why not have everything? Hmm. Let the mighty hand of grace help us. Let the mighty hand of grace see us through. Denial. Peter denied him. All those grudges you have been counting is as a result that your husband denied you. Your wife denied you. Your father denied you. Child. A couple that served here some years ago. I, she came closer to our office and we were talking one day. And she made a statement and said, Oh my goodness. She said, she cannot forgive her father. I said, why? I said, forget about that man. I said, please. She said, daddy, don't say that. I cannot forget that man. That man cast me and my mother away. All my siblings, we were cast away. We fend for ourselves. Is it now that God has helped me to graduate that I will ever see that man? He said, that man will never eat anything from me. He can never say anything good from me. That means I said, you don't want anything good to come from you. Why not forgive? Sometimes forgiveness looks too hard and too difficult. Yes. We must have to forgive. There must be that forgiveness. You must have to. Forsook him. Peter denied him. First time, second time, third time. Three times. In a row. In a street. Though Jesus knew it. The Bible said that he knew that there's nothing good in man. Therefore, he refused to have confidence in man. Look at Peter, who have been talking, who have been up, who have been done, who have been powerful, who have been mighty, who have been everything. Just within a twinkle of an eye, he denied Jesus of Nazareth. Hmm. May God show us mercy. May God show us mercy. You did this to me. I will never forgive you. There's one man of God, powerful, great and anointed. Oh, he's the GS of the church. Oh. And they, one of, he feared that one of the pastors provoked him. And the pastor went for reconciliation. I'm sorry, sir. He told him, I will not open your chapter this year. It's next year I will open your chapter. That means it's not saying I'm going to forgive you. That's what it means. I think since October, the issue happened. And the man of God needed reconciliation by November. I told him, no, leave it in next year. And no date of next year. Child. Let's stop taking this risk we're taking home. Let's stop taking all this risk that we have been taking. Let's stop taking them. We've been playing gamble with our life. You have only one life. The moment you fell into hell, you cannot be pulled, pulled out from hell to come to heaven. Stop playing gamble with your life. Stop playing gamble with your life. Settle every issue there and then. Don't let it return in your heart. Even with your wife, even with your husband. Settle it and let everything end there. We've been taking a lot of risk. All this stupid risk of unforgiveness we have been taking and taking and taking one day it might not be well oh let's learn how to forgive deny jesus was denied three times and that's why he's the man of sorrow the, the god or the deny the apostles have run away peter that decided to come closer again denied him that's how I, he knows much about sorrow and that's why when you pass through such a situation you go to him he's the only one that comforts you god does not comfort you for you to be comfortable he comforts you for you to be a comforter for you to comfort another man for you to comfort another woman and you know what i'm saying for you to comfort another human being god the great comforter is there to get you comforted 
We have a God that never fell. We have a God that will never change. We have a God that is worthy. We have a God that is excellent. We have a God that is wonderful. We have a God that is real. We have a God that is great. We have a God that is worthy. We have a God that is wonderful. We have a God that is honorable. We have a God that can never change. He will never, never change. Jesus Christ the same forevermore. Hallelujah. Number three. His own disciple, his own disciple betrayed him. Hey, a man he ate together, a man he brought up, betrayed him. That's why he had so many sorrows, multiple sorrows. But with all the sorrows he had, did he succeed? Yes, he was yet able to play the script that was written about him. Script about you have been written. Where you start, where you go, how you will end, they are there. Oh, you're going to achieve for the Lord. The trials and the potential that will come your way, they are all written there. Are you hearing me? The trials, the temptation, everything, they are all written there. There's a script that has been play, written about your life by God Himself. Can you allow yourself to play the script? How long are you staying here on earth? Some people have come and gone, come and gone. You have come, you will go. Even there are people that have not come, they will still come, they will go. His disciples forsook him and fled. Peter denied him. Oh my God. And now is that his own disciple sold him. Matthew chapter 26 from verse 47. 47 to 49. Matthew chapter 26, 47 to 49. Matthew 26, 47 to 49. Matthew 26, 47 to 49. I read. While he yet spake, Lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came with him, a great multitude with sword and stave, from the chief priest and elders of the people. That's what it. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same is he. Hold him fast. Verse 49. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master! And kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Let's get to 50. Friend, wherever art thou come, then came they and laid hold on Jesus and took him. Betrayal. Betrayal. Somebody you felt you have done much for will go at the back and stab you at the back and say all oh, manner of evil against you at the back. Hmm. And say all oh, manner of bad things against you at the back. Hmm. May God forgive. May God show us mercy. There are a lot of us because he did this thing to me. He said evil, evil against me. He betrayed me. You are not the first to be betrayed. The brothers of Joseph betrayed him. He forgave them. The wife of Job betrayed him. Hmm? Jesus of Nazareth was betrayed. You saw that when Elisha was betrayed, Yes, they went and collected this and this and that. He cost them. Have you seen the difference? That's why Elijah today is not your body in Biara. Jesus is. He came to show us what it means to live a Christian life. What it means to live for God here on earth. He came down from heaven and demonstrated it. Though there are a lot of things that would have distracted him here on earth. But he refused to be distracted. Can you refuse to be distracted, a child of God? Can you refuse to be distracted, woman of God? Man of God. Can you tell yourself, no? Mm -mm, I will not do that. I was a man of sorrow. I am telling you the sorrows of Jesus. What he passed through. What caused pains to him. What made him great and mighty. Why he is lifted above every other person today. When the disciples said no. When the head of the apostles said no. Denied him. When one of them he had been feeding. 
for three years, spiritually, physically, have been staying with, betrayed him. Let me tell you, it's not an outsider that will betray you. It will be somebody very close to you that will betray you. Some will do it purposely for you to fail down, fail. Some will purposely do it because they have been hired, they have been bought over. Be careful with life. Whenever you dream a dream where you are naked, walking in the street or doing that, I don't take it easily. That's disgrace from the devil. Disgrace from the enemy. Though it is a script written about your life, but you can, with the power of God and power of wisdom, overcome it. <clears throat> what are we trying to say? That is this God who has written everything about your life. Or you need a disgrace to overcome. That's why we must not stop talking about grace. Give me grace to follow. Abundant grace to follow. I need your grace to follow. Your grace is enough for me. Father, I need your grace to follow. Abundant grace to follow. Savior, I need your grace to follow. Your grace is enough for me. We need this grace and abundant grace to follow. Hmm. Even Judas himself betrayed him. It's the return of him that you will be betrayed. Let me tell you. It might be that betrayer that will be made about your life that will lift it to another height, higher. It might be that betrayer that will grant your prayers. If not for the betrayer from the wife of Potiphar, Joseph wouldn't have been to prison. If Joseph was not in the prison, he wouldn't have made the kings whosoever had advertised his ministry. Are you hearing me? Out of those difficulties, there is sweetness. Out of that bitterness, there is sweet, there is honey. Out of that pain, there is gain. Stop disturbing yourself. Stop scratching your brain as if you want to go mad. So many of us cannot bear anything. When anything happens, ah, you cry, you complain, you shout. That is the program and the divine program of God for your life. God is highly interested in you and in everything about you and he wants you to excel, he wants you to go on, he wants you to move on, he wants you to be who he wants you to be. He wants you to be the man that will shine, the great man, the great woman. That's what God is desiring of you. Hmm. For mighty is God, great is God, real is God. And worthy and wonderful is God. Unto him be all the glory forevermore. Amen. Mm. Another point four again. His own people betrayed, uh, you know, his own people betrayed him. Remember the other one was Judas Iscariot? His own people rejected him. His own people rejected him. Have we been rejected? A man of sorrow. He had a lot of sorrow. That's what you are passing through now that the Lord Jesus has not passed through. He has passed through. He has graduated. He won and wanted to be an overcomer so that you look at his own perfect example. Somebody was offended by somebody and they were say, telling the man of God, you are a child of God. And for Christ's sake, forsake. If it, Jesus has not read, the Lord has forsaken, uh, forgiven. Please, can you forgive? Do you know what the man of God said? The man of God said, you want me to forgive because of Jesus or not? I'm not Jesus now. I am not Jesus. I said I am not Jesus. I, I won't bear it because I am not Jesus. Oh my goodness. Then whose disciple are you? Are you not going to be like him? He said, as he was here, and so shall we be. Hey. He said, no, he's not Jesus. His own people rejected him. Have you been in a point of rejection where nobody is talking with you? I have passed through that experience. We are nobody except to be your friend. We are you are a devil among people. Mm. May the mighty hand of grace, may the mighty hand of power 
rest upon our life and make us glad again and renew us in the name of Jesus. Let's see. His own people rejected him. That's sorrow. Have you been rejected? It shall be well again. It's for your betterment. Matthew chapter 27 from 22 to 25. Matthew chapter 27, 22 to 25. Matthew chapter 27, verse 22 to 25. Matthew chapter 27, verse 22 to 25. I read. Pilate said unto them, What shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, let him be crucified. The rejection has started. And the governor said, Why? What evil has he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. Bible said they cried out. Hey! While the palace saw that he could prevent nothing, but that rather a tumult was made. He took water and washed his head before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. See you to it. And what happened? Look at verse 25. Then answered all the people and said, His blood be upon us and on our children. Chai! He released Barnabas for them and allowed them to go and kill Jesus. Have we been killing Jesus? Are you denying him? Are you rejecting him? Let me tell you. If you reject him here on earth, you still meet him in eternity. He'll be your judge. Better make him savior and so that in eternity he will be your judge. When your savior is your judge, you are free. But when the man you hate is your judge, you know where, where, where you are landing. The mighty hand of grace upon us. And Christ's magnified power be upon us forever as to worship the shame of the days. To God be our glory in Jesus' name. Child of God. It's a hard time you rise and say, I will stand and be who God wants me to be. I will arise. I will I hate rejection. I will not. Whatever sorrow I have, Jesus have had them and Jesus have passed through them. Jesus take care of my sorrows. I will not continue in this way. For that's not the divine plan of Jehovah for my life. I know who he is. I know in whom I trust. I have a father. Almighty Father, King of kings, Lord of love, I have a Father, I have a Father, Mighty glorious Father, King of kings, Lord of love, I have a Father, I have a Father, Almighty Father, oh, King of kings, Lord of love, I have a father. May Christ then be your Lord. You can come out of that sorrow. Remember I told you, sorrow is a feeling of deep distress. I, oh, ah. Some people out of sorrow have heartache. Brokenness of heart. Jesus has passed through all this things. That's why he's a body bearer. Get back to him. Leave that body. Say, you cannot bear it. I have carried them. It is too heavy. It is too much. Send them to me. I have carried them. When one unfortunately comes your way, see shift them back to me. He's the only one that can bear it. He's the only one that carried it and conquered it on the cross of Calvary. May his mighty hand be upon you. May the mighty hand of respect of God, divine respect, come from you, from the Almighty God on your life in Jesus' name. Blessing just doesn't pour. It's what you have done here that will attract the blessing from above. Power from above. Power from above. Power from above. Power from above. I need it. I need it. Pour it on me. I need it, Lord. I need it. Pour it on me. Power from above. Oh, power from above. Power from above. Oh, power from above. I desire it. I need it. Power from above. I desire it. 
I need it, the oh Lord. Power from above. Power from above. May the mighty hand of God rest upon you. Having had about four sorrows he passed through here on earth, is it not a high time for you to say, Who am I? What am I passing through? Can't I be? Give this man my burdens? Can't I be a self child of God? Shall we begin to pray? Can you begin to pray? Can you begin to thank him for carrying your sorrows, your pains? That was what he did on the cross of Calvary over 2,000 years ago. Can you begin to ask him, Lord, show me mercy? Mercy, Lord! Can you begin to say, Lord Jesus, for being the king, for being the Lord, for being the master, not carrying your hand on your leg or your hands on your head, everything. No, no, no. Remove it! Carry those sorrows and pains for him. If that's what you want to do, you must be born again. Bible said, the only prayers of sin that God answers prayer of salvation. Prayer of true repentance. Can you right now have a genuine repentance so that the Savior of the whole universe will touch you? Shall we pray? Mighty man in battle, the earth shall die. If you want to receive Jesus, can you say, Lord Jesus? Come into my life. I receive you now, Lord. As my Lord and personal Savior. Show me mercy, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let the mighty hand of the Lord rest upon you. May Jesus transform you. Renew you and give you salvation in the name of Jesus. May you remain a true child of God. All those of you that are born again already, you have had this word. Every sorrow of your life, vanish, 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 vanish. Every sorrow that has so swallowed you, that made you to be senseless, that have had psychological problems on you, let them disappear. Let, let me tell you, Father, help us, Lord, to know that anything we give attention, oh Lord, to give us direction. Anything you give attention gives you direction. May we give attention to the word of God so that Jesus will direct us. Unto you, brother, glory as we bless you, Lord. Dominion, adoration, and thanksgiving be ascribed unto the name of man of God. To you alone, brother, glory as we bless you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. It's where we are going out and coming in. Divine peace of God upon you and his mighty hand of grace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Remember, we've got to meet tomorrow evening. Hmm? Tomorrow evening again. We are now in TikTok. We are preaching the word of God in TikTok. This part how polluted it is. We are preaching. Follow us in TikTok. Damian. At Damian. Just follow us at TikTok. At Damian. Just follow us over there. I will keep having constant program and messages on TikTok. God will keep you. God will bless you. Thank you so much. As the mighty hand of grace rest upon you. In Jesus name. Remember, bless and favor until me tomorrow evening. It is well. God bless you.